of criticizing that approach. And, and that's what the theme of this entire day is going to be about, is how we kick up the biological activity, the health, in the soil, on the plants, uh, and in the garden uh, in general. So we have good biodiversity, we have plenty of pollinators, uh, including the honeybees and all that. And by the way, those of you that came straight into the um, audience here, we've got some of the people that will be uh, giving talks. We'll have them up, uh, some of the others up during breaks. You're going to get to meet people that you've heard me talk about for a long time. A lot of them are down the hall in a room there, and you can meet uh, a lot of these people that can uh, help you with everything from soil testing to nutritional products. Here's what we want to accomplish. We want to accomplish uh, a root system on plants that looks like this. And it surprises people often when they see this shot when I tell them that that's not really the root system that they're looking at. What they're looking at uh, there, what we're all looking at there is mycorrhizal fungus. The only part of that shot that is roots are up there right at the base of this little pine tree seedling where you see those nodules and you see the brown root structure. The rest of that is mycorrhizal fungus. If you go organic, if you use nothing but compost and mulch, you'll develop this on your roots, on the root system of your plants. But on the other hand, uh, there are things that we can do to speed up the process. Here's what we want to accomplish. We want to have the chemistry, the physics, and the biology in a healthy condition in the soil. The people that push the synthetic fertilizers and the pesticides think about one thing. They think about the chemistry. Well, chemistry is important. The MPK, the trace mineral availability, all that is very important, but we need to have the biology and the physics in place as well. Biology's the earthworms, the microorganisms, bacteria, and the mycorrhizal fungi, the protozoa, all those uh, microscopic things that should be in the soil. But we also need the physics good, the aeration, the drainage of the soil. Uh, the, the physical properties, in other words. And anything you do to any of those three to make them more balanced will help the other two. But the easiest way to go is to do things that help the biology. And then everything else moves along for the ride. This program is very simple. It's compost, rock powder, and sugar. That's the organic program. It's that simple. Nothing else um, really matters, and when you hear people talk about using synthetic fertilizers, you'll hear them talk about NPK and the chemistry. You'll never hear much, uh, if anything, about the physical properties or the, um, or the biology, other than maybe tilling some of their uh, peat moss and chemicals into the soil. And by the way, I don't recommend peat moss. I recommend compost. And I recommend healthy compost. If you make compost at home, which I recommend that you do, it'll look something like this. You'll actually be able to see and feel and smell the life in the compost. You can actually see the, the filaments of mycorrhizal fungus in a healthy uh, compost. It can, you can buy compost if you don't want to make it yourself. But it is uh, one of, not the, but one of the most important pieces of the puzzle. Here's what I recommend you do with the peat moss you might still have at home. If you grow potatoes or if you save your bulbs, your flowers, uh, from year to year, it's the best medium in the world to store things in. And that also points out why I don't like it. It doesn't promote bacterial growth. It's basically sterile. So things will stay in it over the winter or whatever. And then, like uh, you see here with our uh, sweet potatoes, they're in perfect shape once you uh, take them out of the dry peat moss. I don't recommend it in the soil because it's antimicrobial. It's too expensive and doesn't work nearly as well as our locally and regionally made composts and mulches. The rock powders are just as important as the compost. This is where a lot of people stump their toe a little bit because you've got to understand this. You need to use lava sand, zeolite, green sand. Green sand is not really a rock, it's a marine deposit, but I put it in the rock category. You can use granite, different kinds of uh, uh, granites, schist, any kind of rock material that's different, a different color, a different texture than the base rock on your property will help things grow. So it's compost and mulches the organic piece, then the rock, ground up rock materials, 
just as important. And then the third piece is important, especially in the front end of a, of a project. When you're doing new uh, vegetable beds, new landscaping or new herb gardens, and that sugar. This is uh, the sugar that I recommend the most on the left here. That's dry molasses. We use it just like a fertilizer application at about 20 pounds per thousand square feet. I'm sorry, the lava sand's on the left, the dry molasses is on the, uh, on the right. What it is is little bits of organic matter like soy or something like that that have been sprayed with molasses. So you get the combination of carbon and um, uh, protein in the same material and that's why it functions so well as, a, as an organic fertilizer. Another sugar that I recommend a lot is corn. And I, I call it a sugar because it converts to sugar so efficiently. That's why you shouldn't eat very much of it. Corn is nutritious, um, genetically modified a lot of it, unfortunately, but it, uh, if you eat a lot of it, you're going to be putting on some pounds because it does convert to sugar so efficiently, so effectively. That's why it works so well in the soil. It functions as a sugar to stimulate biological activity. We first started using it as a disease control uh, because we found that when it is put in the soil, it stimulates a beneficial organism called trichoderma. And when trichoderma grows, it controls a lot of the disease pathogens like rhizoctonia and several other diseases. It can be used uh, in potting soils if you don't use too much of it. It can be used uh, as a broadcast application across your seedlings or uh, mixed into beds anytime you plant something new, which I recommend. Here again is what we're trying to do. We're trying to develop roots like on the uh, right there instead of on the left. That was an actual research project in uh, Texas, and uh, I'll think of the name of the town in a minute. I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, Gonzales. It was Gonzales Greenhouse down in uh, Gonzales, Texas. And the experiment was to fertilize with a commercial a uh, miracle grow type product on the left and on the right an organic fertilizer was used. That was the only difference. And you can see the big difference in the roots of the plants. That grower experienced less disease problems, less insect problems on the ground cover crops, and fewer deaths of his young plants and thus better production and better profits. Again, this is what we want. The tomato plant on the right has been uh, treated with something the one on the left hasn't been treated with, and that's mycorrhizal fungus or mycorrhizae. And that's the only difference in those two. The, the production increase can be tremendous if you just simply do things that encourage mycorrhizal fungus. And guess what does? Everything that I've talked about so far, the rock materials, the sugar, the, the organic materials, stimulate the beneficial bacteria and the fungus. And it works on all crops. It works on vegetables, herbs, trees very effectively, and it also works on grasses. Those uh, two plantings there are both bent grass. One on the left has been, the seed were treated with mycorrhizae, and on the right they weren't. Um, then the uh, maintenance program is as simple as the installation program. We recommend putting out one dry fertilizer a year at least. Some people will put as many as three, spring, early summer, and fall. Some people, especially people who have been organic for a while, will do one application a year. Some like to do it in the fall, some like to do it in the spring. Uh, there's a little bit of a debate there. And then the rest of the year we like to put out this mixture that we call Garrett juice either on a monthly basis or at least a quarterly basis. Some people's budget only allow it to be done one time. And Garrett juice, as probably a lot of you know already, is compost tea or liquid humate and molasses, vinegar, seaweed, and um, the uh, fish for the uh, Garrett juice plus, which we uh, have found makes it work even better. The formulas for you.